Also tonight, a lasting legacy for Amani. The parents calling for more government funding for brain tumour research as they raise tens of thousands of pounds in memory of their daughter. Should it be on bereaved families to be jumping out, you know, jumping themselves out of planes to, to raise funds, you know, where they're suffering something so difficult already? Next tonight, when Amani Leoquat was diagnosed with a brain tumour, her family vowed to do everything they could to cure her, including flying to Germany to buy trial medication unavailable here in the UK. She died in February, aged just 23. Her parents have continued to fight, raising awareness and almost £100,000 for research, which they say the government should be providing. Claire McGlasson went to Luton to meet them. But she found the strength on that day, you know, one last time. It's the final video of Amani posted to the friends and strangers who supported her. Awarded her master's degree in the hospital bed set up for her at her home in Luton, she died five days later, not two years after being diagnosed with a brain tumour, glioblastoma multiform, or GBM. It's absolutely devastating to see the way it sort of strips them of everything that they once were. It changes the per individual's personality, it changes their ability to walk and move, it affected her vision, it affected her short-term memory, so you're, you're seeing your loved one slowly die in front of you. They found out after Amani suffered a seizure on her 22nd birthday. She was rushed to hospital, but with COVID restrictions, she was forced to undergo the tests alone. I think we got yeah. the actual diagnosis the next day once the uh, oncologist consultants had come in. And he found us because we weren't allowed in the hospital. And he said... Um, your daughter's got between 12 to 18 months left to live. And that was all on telephone and we couldn't be with her. Despite chemo and radiotherapy, the tumour continued to grow. The treatment we get in the UK is, is nowhere near the level of treatment we, you can get in the US or even in Europe. And so families such as ours are left with no option. No option but to try drugs still being trialled and to find the £1,000 a week needed to pay for them. With the help of donations from the public, Amani's father flew to Germany to buy them. While Amani lent her voice to this brain tumour research campaign. Just one percent of the national spend on cancer research is spent on brain tumours. Recording a podcast with Tom Parker of The Wanted, who was also receiving treatment for a brain tumour. He died in March. The government pledged 40 million over five years and... That five years is nearly up, and so far only about nine million of the 40 million has been pledged. And without the funding, we're not, we're not going to get any closer to a cure. To date, her family have raised almost £100,000 to fund it. Should it be on bereaved families to be jumping out, you know, jumping themselves out of, um, out of planes to, to raise funds, you know, when they, you know, they, they're suffering from something so difficult already? Um, but if the, if, the, if the government aren't doing it, we feel like we have to. And so, following Amani's lead, they do. But it can fund research, and for those diagnosed with GBM, that could buy them time. Claire McGlasson, ITV News, Luton. Well, in response to those criticisms over research funding, the Department of Health and Social Care said we have redoubled our efforts to find therapies and new treatments and in 2018 announced £40 million of funding over five years. All applications that have been assessed as fundable in open competition have been funded and this is continuing. Well, today is Glioblastoma Awareness Day and earlier I spoke to Hugh Adams from Brain Tumour Research, which is based in Milton Keynes. I started by asking him why more awareness is needed. I think what we see with a story like Armani's is just what a, a devastating disease this is. It's an indiscriminate disease. It, it, it doesn't choose by gender, by age, by race. It just affects anyone at any time. And so what we need is more people to be aware about it. More people are aware of glioblastoma. More people say, let's do more about that. And that involves funding, uh, fundraising, awareness raising, all of those things to make a difference, to invest in the scientific research that's the route to the improvement of clinical options and patient outcomes. 
And you say it can affect anyone. Thankfully, it is a, a rare form of cancer, but it does kill more children and young people, doesn't it? Well, brain tumours in general are the biggest cancer killer of children and adults under the age of 40. And what we do know with certainty is that if we're going to improve that stark statistic, we need to invest in discovery science, the, the, the science that underpins all clinical innovation. And, and that's what we at Brain Tumour Research campaign for. We campaign for parity of funding. You know, we, we've made giant steps with breast cancer and with leukaemia. Let's make those steps for brain tumour patients and, and change these stark facts. Um, you're, you're seeking parity. Just 1% of cancer research funding currently goes to brain cancers. Why do you think it is underfunded? I think one of the problems with the underfunding for brain tumour research has been that in other areas where there's been better funding, better funding has brought progress, has brought more funding, has brought more progress. So there's been a sort of a, a snowball effect and, and brain tumour patients and their families have been left behind. So we, we fund our own research at Brain Tumour Research, but we also campaign to get the government to do more. They need to help us with this burden and help us make a difference for brain tumour patients. Now, we have heard from Amani's mother who says that families feel they have no choice but to fundraise because the government isn't doing enough. She wants to know um, why it's down to them when they're already going through so much. It's a real issue about getting patients into clinical trials in the UK. We hear too many stories of, of patients and their families being told that the NHS can do no more. And then the family is almost obliged to look abroad and to to research and to self-fund treatment abroad. That, that can't be the way forward. We should learn from what we've done with the vaccine, learn from what we've learned from the pandemic, uh, and, and make things available in the UK for brain tumour patients. And that means trials, and that means research funding. Well, Hugh, let's hope we do see a change. Thank you very much for joining us.